Okay, perfect. Yes, um, welcome everybody to a quick uh, input on uh, digital fair trade and uh, how that can um, be a potential game changer in, in the area of uh, digital work. Um, I already had the chance today to pitch um, the organization that I'm coming from, Digital Alliance, uh, and um, it was a f uh, something where I could pitch three minutes and then get 15 minutes of feedback. I really enjoyed that, not uh, talking too much, but also getting feedback. So I hope it's okay if I, uh, if I don't uh, use the 20 minutes slot only of uh, big, um, blowing uh, information on you, but maybe take 10 minutes to give, give you some input and then uh, we make this a conversation, um, questions and so on. Uh, if that works uh, for you. Um, yes, so um, digital fair trade, what is that uh, about? Uh, don't be surprised, uh, what I'm showing you here is not a perfectly presented, a perfectly uh, prepared presentation. This is actually a report which you can find also on, on our website, digitalalliance.co, um, which we wrote together with the World Fair Trade Organization. Uh, yeah, sorry, also for the intro, my name is Jan Fedler. I am the co-founder of Digital Lines, uh, based uh, legally in Germany, but our operations are mainly in Kenya. And what we do is we um, train young uh, people in graphic design, animation, and uh, web development to then market their uh, digital services uh, online on a fair trade basis. So we create opportunities uh, in the rural areas of Kenya. Uh, under fair trade conditions. So yeah, we wrote this report together with the World Fair Trade Organization. And um, yeah, I'm just using this report a little bit as a, as a red, uh, a roter Faden, how you say in German, um, to um, guide us a, a bit through. But uh, don't be worried about the small text and stuff. Uh, you're not meant to read all this. Uh, but uh, if you want to go dig in later, you know there's a report, you can find the details over there. Um, maybe a quick question in the beginning. Who is familiar with the concept of fair trade? Or who is not? Okay, good. Um, then that makes it a little bit easier. Um, yeah, maybe uh, to start um, in the beginning. Um, the, the concept of digital fair trade is really about bringing the digital, uh, bringing the fair trade principles to the digital realm. Why? Um, because there is a, uh, there's a bunch of opportunities that come with the uh, with the digitalization and digital work in terms of digital platforms, outsourcing platforms such as freelancer, uh, Fiverr.com, um, Upwork. Some of you might know them. So there's lots of opportunities that come with these digital work platform where you can sell graphic design, where you can sell other digital uh, services and work transcription services, transla translation services, data entry, anything. Um, but there's also lots of challenges that come with it. So um, the idea of bringing fair trade principles to this digital realm is really to ensure that we can take the good from these digital work platforms, from generally the concept of digital work, uh, but uh, forego the, the, the downsides, the, the risks and the, the negative aspects. Um, Maybe digital work in numbers, you can see here the uh, number of crowd, cloud work platforms uh, and has increased from 50 in 2008 to 283 now globally uh, two years ago. Um, so the, this, this area of digital work and digital platforms is really uh, rising massively. Um, it's a global phenomenon, of course, and as, as, as some of you might have guessed, uh, a large uh, part of this is playing uh, is taking place in, in uh, Asia, in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Philippines. Uh, these are the largest suppliers of online work. Um, yeah, maybe not surprising. Many of you know Indian outsourcing companies. You get many of you might get emails um, if, if if you're in the working context. Emails from Indian outsourcing. Um, companies, um, yeah, so that's not too surprising. So let's jump uh, straight to the benefits and opportunities of digital work. Yeah, I'll be uh, trying to be quick here so we can really have some time for exchange. Um, so I'll really be very brief and we do the rest uh, either face-to-face -face or uh, you, you read the report later on. So. 
so this, the, the main opportunities really uh, of these platforms are work opportunities, right? A, a um, person in Kenya, like the people we work with, uh, before these platforms arise, or the opportunity to work uh, even without an online platform, but just like we do by, by finding buyers from the global north, matching them with people in Kenya to work on a website, um, there was no chance for, for this type of work bef uh, without the internet. So, um, and this, this type of digital work. So it, 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 it's a huge income opportunity for, for many people around the globe. That's probably one of the, the greatest advantages. Um, it is also an opportunity for social inclusion. You can have people with disabilities, you can have um, women or uh, parents in general taking care of their children. It's a very flexible type of work. If you design a, a website, um, uh, you can do it from home. Um, you don't need to come to a workplace necessarily. So it gives lots of opportunities, like you know, COVID has also shown this to us in, uh, in the Global North as well. It even provides some opportunities for employee protection because of you know the transparency that is uh, that comes with digital um, markets and platforms in general. You can see maybe how many hours did somebody work, how long did he log in into systems and so on. And maybe some of you already guessed that there are uh, problems with this transparency and uh, and data protection issues and so on. But in theory, there is also um, opportunity to protect employees by, by digital means and you know, tracking of working hours and so on and so forth. Uh, these were just some examples of the students we work with or, or graduates who are now um, web developers, graphic designers. Um, yeah. So coming to the downsides, um, one of the main downsides is probably the unpredictability of uh, of um, of your income and the insecure employment this this type of very uh, flexible work some of you might know the term gig economy so you jump from one gig to the other you don't have fixed working contracts um, so th so that's that's a downside so flexibility always comes with these two sides um, a big thing is that this digital work market on these platforms like Upwork, Fiverr, is pretty much unregulated or little regulated. So we, we don't have good labor laws, labor regulations in this field, and it's, it's only just emerging that uh, players like the International Labor Organization are pushing for more protection in this area. So because it transcends national, national boundaries, um, you have problems about um, taxation, social security, evasion, and paying people not uh, paying into their social security accounts, and so on and so forth. Uh, you also have unfair conditions on these platforms. These platforms are often optimizing for the consumers, for the buyers, so they are kind of discriminating the sellers. There's usually more sellers than buyers, so um, then there's um, race to the bottom effects where too many sellers uh, out compete themselves and prices go very much down. Um, you don't have nice uh, cooperation mechanisms where the, where the um, uh, sellers could, you know, maybe come together and agree, okay, we don't go beyond a certain price, which technically would be very easy on a platform, but the platforms don't do that. Yeah, so I think I have to jump about a lot of this, but I told you you can read it up. Um, unfair payment is an issue. Um, yeah, so I guess I really, uh, I, I leave it here showing you some of the, the pros and cons um, and can be, may, maybe just say two more words on what we do at uh, Digital, uh, sorry, uh, Digital Lions so that you see w w how, how do we do it, what, do, what is our um, approach. So um, on the top left, you see, see our brand and our logo. So, we, yeah, we do training of people in in, uh, in northern Kenya, um, young people around 18 to 20 years old. Um, we train them in web development, graphic design, and animation, and then e either support them in building freelancer careers on such platforms such as Upwork, Fiverr, uh, and so on, or we take them into the agency. Uh, which is fair trade verified, so we are the world's first fair trade verified agency. We did this together with the WFTO, basically going new ground here. 
And uh, so that means we do pay p uh, people fairly uh, above the local living wage, which is not so difficult in the domain of websites and uh, design. But we also provide um, fair uh, conditions like prepayment. So if we work on projects together, even though the client has not yet paid us, we pay our project people, participants. Uh, we provide good working conditions. Um, we, our campus is completely solar powered. We invest into education, we invest into uh, woman empowerment. So you can read it all up, there's a list of 10 criteria that you have to fulfill if you are a fair trade player. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I didn't go as far as, as fast as I want, but uh, I hope this gives you a glimpse of an idea of what fair trade in the digital domain can mean. And um, yeah, now I would really like to uh, see if there's any questions. Thank you. I think we have another mic, um, or I can also come round, or you can also speak without a mic, maybe. Yes, please. Mic is coming. Thank you. Uh, I'm Bjorn. Uh, and I, I'm trying to formulate my question here, but basically I'm thinking of fair trade in terms of like you bring jobs to Kenya, right? And, and you educate them also to do this high-skilled job, I guess you could consider it. And um, maybe it's a hard question, but how do you, uh, let's say more high-skilled job is still sort of linked to the global north or like Europe or, or, or such like because of maybe a more inclusive university system or such but how do you limit um, us from taking their high skilled jobs if there is any in Kenya I mean that can also be if you think reverse like we can work digitally with companies and and, and products and services in Kenya right and and to some extent you could see that like with Google and Apple and such like they they work with digital services globally and sort of can I guess outcompete the local market also did you see my question or I mean it's a bit difficult uh, I heard a little bit of the brain drain problem that you talked about that we use their talents yeah or rather that there is still there is still a gap between sort of the education levels between uh, like industrialized countries and developing countries and um, yeah I mean you, I guess you have to push a lot also to invest in education because it's a lot about the skill not about where they are or such like I mean a, a Kenyan could work for Google if they have the right skill right so uh, yeah, what yeah. It, yeah. I mean, on the brain drain question, uh, it's exactly one of the goals we have to s stop the brain drain. We because we um, we enable people to stay in their remote home region. For example, our campus we call it the the world's most remote ICT campus. It's in Tokana, and it's not Nairobi downtown where Microsoft and Google and all of them are. We are very much in the rural areas. Um, so and, and and yes, the people work internationally, but. Um, the, the, the brains stay and the, uh, you know they can also work for the local market as, at the same time if they freelance and so on so the, there's no brain drain and on the education side um, yeah um, to some extent you, you said the education level is lower um, to some extent I don't think that's even the case but there's just less job opportunities there's lots of highly skilled people um, well educated but there's a high uh, academic unemployment rate so our approach to education is more vocational training or you know startup boot camp or a coding boot camp like so it's a one year very intense program but it it doesn't give you a huge full five year study but it rather shows you very hands on how do i do a wordpress website how do i do a, a logo how do i you know uh, do a 2d animation so it's very practical hands on uh, that's targeted towards income generation i don't know if that's answered your question anything
You mentioned the, um, the work is actually found on those big platforms like Fiverr. Uh, so your agency is on there. And what's, what's your visibility, um, the, the fact that you're doing all this fair trade stuff, does it add value to, uh, to your uh, workers? And um, do you think that um, more, like, more could be done by other types of organizations to actually foster a need uh, in the buyers for like uh, uh, getting their workforce uh, from a fairer uh, source. Um, so your question is, like, if we, uh, why we use Fiverr also, or uh, so maybe you can rephrase. Sorry. Uh, why would any of the people who buy stuff from Fiverr buy from you, and how can we improve that? Oh yes, sure, yeah. Um, yeah, Fiverr is actually not our main channel. We try it a lot, but as you say, people who go there usually go by price a lot, and we it's hard for us to compete with India, Bangladesh, and so on on price. So, um, so we have to really differentiate us um, through our impact, through our fair trade verification, and that one is not so visible on Fiverr. So, what we dream of is actually a platform that we could call Fair Fiverr, or you know, um, so we have a concept for that. We worked a little bit with the ILO and other players, uh, GIZ, if we could come up with such a platform. But I mean, you're probably tech people or some of you are tech interested. You can imagine it's quite a, quite a thing. Ideally, we would use some sort of open source uh, platform model and so on. But th th that's our dream, to, to come up with such a platform and to, to drive um, uh, B2B consumers to this platform. Um, but, but as you said, that we need to push also the consumers to, or the, the, the buyers to um, think more about this awareness. Um, so I guess the concept is pretty new. And also, um, if, you, if you buy a website from a German um, provider, you usually don't think that there's a problem to it, right? Um, so you don't, there's nothing bad with buying a website from a German service provider. Um, but the, the main downsides more lie in this outsourcing without, or, uh, without any protection through these platforms. So, yeah, I think we need to raise awareness a little bit. Um, and um, our target groups are really NGOs, social businesses, or any business that has a strong CSR, so businesses that care a lot about uh, where does their services come from that they source. Um, so then there's a match. So if you have an NGO that, uh, and we go, you know, go to the NGO and say, look, we can do your website, we can do your logo. Um, they're happy because we create impact, they create impact, it's a good match. It, um, um, yeah. I think I only partially answered your question. <laughs> I think in theory, formally, we are at the end of my time slot, um, but I'm probably happy to take another uh, one, one question if anybody has. Okay. Still, I hope um, this gave you a little bit of an opportunity to, to check out something new, check out uh, Digital Fair Trade, in case anybody of you works for an NGO or whatever who needs uh, something Fair Trade designed in Kenya, you now know where to go to. If anybody of you wants to develop a Fair Fiverr platform, please approach me. Um, yeah, and have fun on the conference. Thanks very much. <laughs>